came to this theatre, I sat in this balcony very quietly. It wasn't full. It was a James <laughs> Brown show. See, James Brown used to do, didn't just just one, like, you, you, you think of, like, these shows, uh, one show. It was actually maybe four or five shows in a day. The first one started, like, I don't know, midday. And it was started out, and I sat here, like, about two o'clock in the afternoon. This bit was kind of empty. And as the day went on, and the place sort of filled up and filled up until the last show, it was, like, full, 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 full. And, um, you know, people just, like, hang out on the balcony, like, smoking joints and everything. I was kind of quite shocked. <laughs> I'd never seen people smoke joints openly in a theatre before. And they were just people, like, smoking joints. And, and, and then it was a review. So, you know... How old were you, actually? I don't know, like, uh, 1964, 21. Wow. So, nice. so, nice. I gotta hear. so yesterday you said, you told a little story about Mick Jagger, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share that again, please? Well, this, well, when just, he came into, like, there was a, a big barbecue party or something. And, and everybody just kind of stopped. And yeah. Was like, oh, my God, it's Mick Jagger. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because he has that effect, Mick. Um, and he's so normal. He's just really normal, quite approachable, and um, has a very disarming quality about him. But at the same time, it's very, very intellectual. So um, when I met him, it's... He and Brian Grazer both. When I when I met them, uh, I just couldn't stop giggling. <laughs> then you said you still got to do this part. I can't stop giggling. Um, but I, I also uh, photobombed them. Oh, you, you did? Know, I did. I photobombed them. Um, they were taking a picture, and I just kind of eased in there. So. And you did a little. No, I just kind of acted like I was supposed to be there. Like, oh. <laughs> if you. <laughs> <laughs> How close are you ever going to get to that? You know, I know that's like, a rare opportunity. Exactly. So, do you exactly. remember your first conversation, except from the giggling? Oh, I'm sure I did a lot of blinking. I did a lot of <laughs> Mick Jagger. You know, saying his first name, last name, like he didn't know his name was Mick Jagger. Um, I, I, man, we talked about food. I think I don't know. Uh, I can't even remember. I don't know. It's Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah. He's hot. Just, he's still hot. I call him Uncle Mick. You do? Yeah, that's amazing. Not to his face, though. Okay. Not to <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I really don't call him Uncle Mick. Only to you guys. Not to him. It surprised me that, that he was just, you know, he was a regular guy. You know, he was... You know, he, he, we talked about everything that you could imagine two guys talking about. Um, like what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. Like women, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you know, just everything. Like um, sports, women, uh, you know, music, of course. Uh, Were you starstruck when you met him? Yeah, yeah. When I met him... Um, you know, I met him for tea. You know, I met him for tea, and uh, which was, you know, like that's classic that you would do that. <laughs> and um, you know, it was wine and all kinds of stuff. But he just made it where it wasn't a big deal. You know, he didn't allow me to be starstruck for too long because, you know, some people would would um, would relish in that moment a little bit longer. And, you know, absorb that power. That's not him. Spoke to a spirit, the spirit to be free. Every record you've got in your collection, and every download you've got, is influenced by James Brown. I don't care about your past. What exactly do you call your style of music? I call it James Brown music because it's so far ahead of its time. Ladies and gentlemen, James. 